Rules for picking up girls in clubs. Rule number one. First things first, if you even wanna play the game, you gotta get into the club. And I've only ever waited in line one time in my life when I first got to LA and never again. Rules for picking up girls at the club. First things first, if you even wanna play the game, you gotta get girls back to the crib. Step one, rip up some old white t-shirts into some rags. Step two, hop onto Craigslist and buy some chloroform. Three, head to the club and loiter around the exit where all the girls are leaving at the end of the night pretty drunk. Step four, straight delicate behind your prey with a handful of rags soaked in chloroform. Form. Step five, head up to the link in my profile and get my course called How to Get Chicks When You Radiate Douchebag Energy for four easy payments of $29.99 and I'll teach you the rest of the steps. <sighs> Hello everyone, so good to see you. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this guy, uh, Russell Hartley. He's a TikTok entrepreneur slash pickup artist and there's just a couple things to know before we move forward. Well, hold up. <laughs> I almost forgot, bro. No cord, no cord, baby. We finally did it. That there is an inside joke for those of you that are subscribed to the channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, you better smash that shit so you're not like the loser at the lunch table that doesn't get the joke next time you come around. So as I often do, last week I got an email from a guy named Fee Tran and he said uh, to give you the Cliff Notes version. What's up, man? Check out this dude, Russell Hartley. He's your typical alpha male, overly confident misogynist who also just happens to sell BS to insecure dudes about how to treat women. And a screenshot of his TikTok. Pretty good amount of followers. How to text a girl and not get ghosted and more. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, this guy's definitely a dink. Let's put him on the back burner and get to him in a, a couple of days. And since that time, he's kind of, Russell here has kind of gone viral a little bit, I think in large part to the fact that uh, he got in a little beef with Curtis Connor. If you don't know who Curtis is, he's a very funny YouTuber. He does similar style commentary videos. Now, I haven't watched Curtis's video. I'm sure it's a masterpiece. He's very good at what he does. Uh, but I wanted to keep my head fresh because I knew I was going to be taking a look at this guy myself. So jumping right in here, uh, it's clear that this man has just been on the grind, you know, just pumping out content for these young bucks trying to teach him how to slay some females uh, by scooping them up at the club. Absolutely loves wearing suits and apparently is so in love with himself he will not record a TikTok unless he's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> so just a slew of videos here. Let's pop in on some early ones to kind of see what he was all about when he first started in February. How I completely automated my corporate job and made a passive income for myself, part one. Hmm. So for those of you who've been following along, obviously at this point in the story, I'm working at a big corporation and a lot of the work you do in big corporations is like tons and tons of bureaucracy. And I start to realize that a large portion of my job is just basically like all the time. Yeah, I'm less interested in business bureaucracy, Russell, and, and more interested in how to conquer females, Russell. Let's move forward a little bit. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part four. So in the previous part, I mentioned having a stable. So what this means if you're a bachelor is that every time you have sex with a new woman, that's a new mare in your go. stable. Here we go. And you want to keep doing this. You're going to have mares coming in and out of your stable. And the reason why they go out is because eventually you get to that conversation where it's like, so where's this going? And the reason why you have multiple mares. Is, is he using an analogy that women are mares in his stable? This <laughs> is, uh, oh baby. Uh, hashtag my girls hustle dating me. What it's like to be, <laughs> just all right, go on Russ. Mares in your stable so that you can determine which one's the thoroughbred. But when the mayors come to you eventually, they go, well, where's this going? This obviously you're not serious about me. This isn't going anywhere. They're going to move on to greener pastures and exit your stable. And that's just the excellent analogy. I'm so glad to use the greener pasture since we're on the horse analogy to begin with. Well done, Russell. The natural way of things. Three to six months and they're out. They're moving on to some other guy that will lock them down. But there is a dark side. There's actually a huge sexual obligation. Oh. I mean, it seems like, oh, that sounds great, right? Wrong. Because if you're seeing three or four women simultaneously and you're busy, you have a job, you have a business or something, because when you do finally see them, you have to hook up with them because they're gonna think there's something wrong with them or something wrong with you, or worse, they're gonna go on and find some other guy. Even if you've been hooking up with girls every single day, they've only been with just you since last week. <laughs> okay, boy. Well, a lot to absorb there. I, I don't know if there's, he does a lot of part one, two, threes. I, I'd like to see if there's more to this particular one. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part five. So as I okay. mentioned, there's a sexual obligation. Sometimes you just want to cuddle, yo. Sometimes oh, you're mad. Come man on, Russ, don't, don't, please don't ever do that again. Sometimes, Sometimes you, you just, just want to cuddle, yo. Cuddle, yo. Cuddle, 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 cuddle. Some parts get raw. Sometimes you're just not rejuvenated enough, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. I had plenty of opportunities to wife it up. But I think every man should have a stable so that he can effectively choose his partner with a clear head and not just choose a partner because that's the woman he most recently slept with. And there's a lot of women that are out there telling you, oh yeah, you gotta do this to get girls or this or that. And they'll tell you all the things you gotta do to like impress her or take her on cute dates. And yeah, don't listen to the women about what they want for men. Listen to Russ, who uses an analogy about a stable 
that compares women to mares. And you can trust this dude, Russell, all right? You're not dressing up in an Armani suit just to take TikToks in your bathroom mirror if you're not spitting the truth. My advice is don't ask a fish how to catch a fish, ask a fisherman. I mean, one minute women are mares in a stable, and the next minute they're fish. I just can't keep up with this dude. That's how you know he's good. Sometimes you just want to cut him out. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, fat guy in a little coat here, just back for a quick second. In Lou, of a sponsorship today. I just wanted to take a second to plug myself. I am launching a gaming channel as well as doing Monday night Twitch streams at 9 p.m. EST. We just did our first inaugural Twitch stream this past Monday. It was a great success. We had a lot of fun. So if you're into live streaming, love to see you on the Twitch channel. Uh, and if you're into the gaming community at all, I'd love to see you over on the gaming channel. The links to these things will be in the description. Additionally, my Discord is up and running now as well, so I'll be popping in there, trying to be a little more involved in the community, and I'll also be coming up with some ideas to involve the community in some gaming videos as well. So if you're into that type of thing, really appreciate the support on those channels if you want. If you're not into that type of thing, that's totally cool too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, back to the video. Hey, come look at this. <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. The only difference between dating apps and say other social media is that you don't really know if they're single or not. <laughs> <laughs> so if we shift our attention over to Twitter, I saw just a few days ago that Russell has gone viral over there now from this tweet by this dude that says, I found him, this is it. The final boss of misogyny. 5.7 million views, huge thread. Uh, this dude is getting all types of hate uh, and is being uh, jeered at by females worldwide. Let's see what dish Russell's serving up over here. Rules for picking up women in clubs, rule number five. Nice. Always have a reason to bring her home. And once you guys are at the point of making out of the club and things are really getting hot and heavy, I always have a reason. Like for me, it's like, hey, I got a dog at home. His name's Max, he's super cute. You should meet him. They always want to meet him. Or I'll say, oh, I have Mario Kart. Every girl, for some reason, what? every girl under the age of 25 is like, oh, I'll kick your ass in Mario Kart. <laughs> oh yeah, prove it. <laughs> We've never once played Mario Kart, not- Bro, fuck you, Russell, come on, Russell! There are lines that are not to be crossed, Russell. I don't care how conservative or how much of a scumbag chauvinist you are like Russell here. You do not lie to somebody about playing Mario Kart. If you tried to pull that off on any girl that was worth her weight in salt, you would instantly have your neck snapped. You'd be getting fitted for a new pair of cement shoes and you'd get dropped off in the local reservoir. Fucking lying about Mario Kart got me steaming, Russell. Oh yeah? Prove it. <laughs> We've never once played Mario Kart. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's like a faux sneeze to try and make a point, Russell. How many times did you rehearse that one? Or is that just your normal thing you go to when you're lying about Mario Kart, you inhumane piece of dog And sometimes I would be like unsure, like, oh, I don't know or whatever. And you go, oh yeah, no, I have to work in the morning anyways. You can't stay or anything. What? You're just going to meet Max and you got to get going. Or we're going to play one round of Mario Kart don't and then you got to get going. Remember, I've never played Mario Kart with a girl, God, not once. Yeah, you told us <laughs> So already, always Russ. have a plan. Remember, a confident Rick. man has a plan. A cocky man doesn't think he needs one. Almost forgot to do the threads. Uh, theory suit, hyper tailored, as you can see. Uh, Balenciaga, Prada, <laughs> Burberry, Burberry, uh, Prada. Respect the drip. Oh no, you didn't do it. You did. You didn't do a respect the drip at the end. God damn it, Russell. Wow. Yeah, so it looks like Russell's just getting a little bit more unbearable uh, with each TikTok he posts, and he does a couple more down here. A shocker that when girls drink, they start to really loosen up. I mean, the hmm. next thing you know, they're dancing like strippers, or they're making out with each other. No and girls, I spied man. on Jeez. the other side of the table a blonde Asian girl with fake cherries <laughs> making out with one of her fake cherries. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of a seven-year-old that just learned about what a penis does. Guess what? Penis. <laughs> <laughs> Making out with one of her friends, and I'm like, perfect. And a six foot one, well dressed <laughs> white guy hitting on a blazing is like shooting with a handicap. I mean, it's child's play. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Six foot one, well dressed white guy. He did conveniently leave out, however, that he's a spaghetti arm string bean, 108 pounds soaking wet that possibly could blow away in a warm summer breeze. In the magnum opus 
What is like dating models in Hollywood? Part five. Anyways, I haven't talked to the Russian girl since, but whatever, that's the nature of the game. They come and go, it is what it is, it's no big deal. You find, I, I literally walking around on the streets of LA, I fall in love with a new girl every day. And dating models in LA is great because you never have to worry about them being like out of shape or gaining weight or whatever, because they're already so hard on themselves. It's absolutely perfect. And as long as you have the resource, Oh, They're already so hard on themselves and hate themselves so much because of this unquenchable, unrealistic vision of what women should look like because of how social media has warped everybody's minds. I don't have to do any manipulating myself. They already hate it. They already hate themselves. It's perfect. Russell has figured it out in LA. This is the perfect place for him, really. I mean, you can pull them as often as you meet them. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, these girls aren't gonna be wifey, but like, who said anything about marriage? But full disclosure, I have met models that I have entered into a serious, committed, monogamous relationship that went on for years. So it is a case by case what? basis. But for the most part, I'm just letting you know, this is what it's like. And you gotta have a strong constitution to date really high end models because they have a huge following on social media. They're waking up to 30 DMs from dudes that are like, good morning, beautiful, and all this stuff. That so is, you gotta be able to true. handle that. <laughs> and that's exactly why high end models don't date weak dudes. And you have to have enough resources to provide because she's not working. Isn't calling them models by definition mean they're working like <laughs> that's why they have all those followers they're getting paid to be models i don't know but this guy clearly uh you know some of his early ones he's talking about the business bureaucracy talking a little bit about polamory you know getting his feet wet it looks like russell just started to spiral he let a couple hundred tiktok followers excuse me a couple hundred thousand tiktok followers uh really travel up into the the depths of his brain and start to hit that bike pump so his head just continued to expand to the point where he started spitting out some shit like this Oh, well, it's basically Skillshare. Oh my gosh, to see the look on your face. Oh, oh my gosh! And that's what half-baked journalism gets you, Curtis Connors. Wow, dude, you, he oh. actually made a full YouTube video on YouTube? Come on, dude. So clearly he's leaning into this Curtis Connor beef, obviously, because he's getting plenty of traffic, even though it's probably mostly comments telling him how much of a piece of shit he is. This video is in response to Curtis Connors' wow. know, attack. Expose, or kind of whatever his channel is about. I'm so excited because this is my first YouTube video ever. And I'm extra excited because I'm getting to respond to a relatively large channel. Hey, yo, what the? So it's really cool to have that kind of exposure. I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, you know, Russell Hartley's not the type of man to miss an opportunity. So he just went straight from TikTok, and we now have Russell Hartley in the commentary community here on YouTube responding to Curtis Connor's video. So I'm not gonna go through that 19 minute response video, but it is interesting he changed his profile. He did before this whole Curtis Connor thing, he had, uh, in the email I got, he had a tiny URL, um, which I think he just changed it recently because I clicked on it and it took you to obviously a sales funnel for a course on how to text a girl and not get ghosted, which is the main reason I wanted to make this place, make this video in the first place is because uh, I can't stand these click funnels from, from these pickup artists. But, but this dude, man, I don't, Russell Hartley, listen, he, his sentiment, the way he thinks isn't necessarily unique. There's been a massive cultural shift in the last 10 to 20 years with social media and all of these dating apps, the swipe left economy now where relationships are expendable, right? If something, you know, the first sign of struggle, you can just throw that one out and then swipe left a hundred times and, and find something fresh and new. So I'm not gonna sit here and say this guy sucks because he likes polamorous relationships or he wants to go to clubs and smash as many girls as possible. I personally find a lot of value in committed relationships and finding a deeper connection with somebody that you can share experiences with and share your life with. That's valuable to me. Maybe it's not to Russell, to each their own. And the same goes for everybody watching this. Obviously everyone has their own idea of what a relationship should be. Uh, but just on the surface level, when you take away like that kind of the deeper stuff, he just comes across as a real kind of chauvinist piece of shit. But it shouldn't come as a surprise. I mean, in every single corner and nook and cranny of the internet, Women are being objectified, just people in general being objectified, reduced to their physical aspects, their traits. And uh, you know, it's this whole social media game has kind of flipped that whole thing on its head. So the fact that Russell's being honest about it and how that's what's important to him, you know, I'm sure a lot of men feel that way that just don't put themselves on blast by, via TikTok in an Armani suit in their bathroom in the mirror. And listen, for every girl that's disgusted by this dude and leaving a comment on his TikTok and that Twitter video that went viral, there's probably another one that would be just as happy to go to the club and get hammered on champagne and, and go home with Russell and skip a round of Mario Kart to clap cheeks. You don't skip Mario!
sell you a car. It really just depends on what your values are. And my values tell me that, wow, this guy's uh, definitely a douchebag. But hey, at least he's being honest about being a douchebag. So there you have it. Russell Hartley, uh, TikTok's number one pickup guru, number one equestrian expert, how to stable the mares. Just uh, incredible advice all around. And uh, if you ever need something Armani, certainly I'm sure he'd be happy to give you a reference on a suit that fits a, you know, 103 pound 6'1 white boy with arms the size of wrists. <laughs> Again, nothing wrong with that, Russell. You know, nothing. I just want to keep you, just want to bring you back down to earth here where the rest of us peasants live that occasionally don't wear Armani suits. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do me a favor and stand up boldly out of your chair and... Yo! Hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me, uh, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Yeah.